everyone. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. It is such an honor and a privilege to be here with you today. And I am so excited to share what God has put on my heart um, with you for this month's theme of sons and daughters. So thank you so much for joining today. Um, I will get started in a, in a few minutes. So if you wouldn't mind dropping in the chat where you're from, where you're joining from, and one thing you're grateful for. So I'll go first. Try not to overthink it. I am grateful for my husband. So when we have grateful hearts, um, the Lord just richly blesses us. So share where you're coming from and one thing you're grateful for. While you're putting those things in the chat, I just want to remind you that sign up for instructor training for Platoon 29 is happening right now. Hi, Kelly. So sign ups ha are happening right now. Instructor training kicks off August 9th and early bird pricing ends on July 26th. So I encourage you to head to our website, download a packet and prayerfully consider this call on your life. So I'm just going to share a little bit of my testimony. I got to go through instructor training in the spring of 2021. So it was all virtual. God definitely knew it was the right time. He knew my heart and he gently invited me into training. So I got to go through training with my best friend and now I get to co-teach fitness classes with her. So God knew that I needed a healing and a restoration. He knew my heart and he knew exactly where he wanted me. And I have learned so much about myself and I had prayed to stop being lukewarm and he took me from that place into wholehearted worship and he continues to open doors in my life. I have found my family, not just my family here at home, but my family. Um, and since I went through training, I have a place and a community that always welcomes me. And it's a place where I know I always belong. And now that I have found my people, we get to go on mission together and we have a purpose to set other people free and we would love to have you join us. So again, if you're even thinking about it, go ahead and download that packet today and let God do the rest. So for those of you just joining, thank you for hopping on today. Uh, if you can share where you're joining in from and one thing you are grateful for. I'll go ahead and get started and I'll first start by introducing myself. I am a child of God. My name is Nicole Rayboyne and I live in Toma, Wisconsin with my incredible husband and our three beautiful kids who are nine, eight, and two, and with our dog Finley. I am a fitness teacher gospel preacher from Platoon 26, Go Engineers, and I'm also a Revelation Wellness Educator from Platoon 2. I just went through training this last spring with an amazing group of daughters, and I'm just starting my journey at being a new regional lieutenant for the North Midwest. So it is such an honor and a delight to be here with you as I get to share the good news from our Heavenly Father. Before I start today's teaching, I'd like to take a moment and pray. So let's just take a deep breath in and exhale. We'll do that one more time. Deep breath in and exhale. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for this time 
and this space, this community. Thank you for your ultimate sacrifice and adopting us into your family as sons and daughters. Lord, I pray for open hearts to receive your word and your goodness. I pray for ears to hear with clarity and eyes to be open to see others as you see them. Lord, I pray that we lean not on our own understanding, but on yours, for you know the plans you have for us today and always. It's in Jesus' precious, holy, and powerful name I pray. Amen. So I just first wanted to share that when I was initially working on this teaching, God was so gracious and he gave me words right away. He gave me a direction. It was clear. And then things started to shift as I began researching and studying different facts. I began to get frustrated and confused and nothing made sense. I was staring at my screen with the cursor just blinking at me and nothing was coming. And I didn't fully realize what was happening until after I listened to Heather's teaching last week. God gently pulled me back and said, you're making this too complicated. That's not what I asked you to do. That's not what I asked you to teach on. I asked you to teach about sons and daughters, to burn the ships, to teach about commitment. So get going. And with that renewed direction, I was able to pick up my pen and hear him speak directly to me. He showed me I didn't need more knowledge. I just needed him. So he gave me this picture of going back to the garden and gently asked me, what would I choose? Knowledge or him? But if I continued with knowledge, I was just going to continue down that road of confusion and it would lead to more frustration. So I picked up my Bible, I picked up my notebook, I picked up my pen, and I went and sat quietly with him and rested with his word. And guess what happened? He led the entire way. It was a reminder to me that his ways are so much better. And I just wanted to share that with you as I felt it placed on my heart to just share that journey because there's no shame here. We're all in it together. So if you haven't already, would you please hit share? Let's make his name known today. So I'm going to briefly highlight a few points from Heather's teaching last week as it goes directly with mine, which is no surprise because he orchestrated it all. So this is all for his glory. He gets all the credit here. So if you happened to miss her teaching, go and catch the replay. It's absolutely delightful. Being human does not make you a child of God. It's a free gift, but you, me, we have to receive it first, brothers and sisters. We need to believe it. We need to believe it, which means we surrender it all to him, to Jesus, our Savior, so that we can get to know him, love him, and walk with him, which all looks like obedience. We'll get back to obedience in just a moment. I'm going to share John 3.16. So if you've heard this verse before, I just encourage you to hear it with new ears, see it with new eyes, and if you want, maybe go ahead and close your eyes. For God so loved the world, for God 
so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Notice it says, whoever. You see, God wants everyone, every man, every woman, every child, everyone. That's always been his plan. He wants you, he wants me, he wants all of us. So what glorious and delightful news that God already did all the work. And he's the father who keeps on giving. For once you have received, so you've already admitted you're a sinner and you need a savior. And you believe. So now you've surrendered it all to him so you can sit at his feet. You are ready to commit your life to him. And with that, you also receive not only his Holy Spirit, which is an incredible gift in itself, but you also receive a family of brothers and sisters, other sons and daughters as a family of God. And we did nothing to get this gift. Wow. Doesn't that just put you in a state of awe and wonder? How beautiful is the kingdom of God and we're all invited into it. So I just want to look at a few verses to remind us of who we are in Christ. John 1 12 tells us we are children of God. Philippians 3 20 tells us we are citizens of heaven. That's right. He already has a spot ready just for you. 2 Corinthians 5.20 tells us that we are Christ's ambassadors. 1 Corinthians 3.16 tells us we are temples in which God dwells. He's alive in you and me. John 15.15 15 says we are Christ's friends. Romans 8, 17 says we are joint heirs with Christ, sharing his inheritance with him. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says we are members of Christ's body. We are saints. We are chosen by God. We are holy and dearly loved. He sets us apart. And one of my favorites. 1 Thessalonians 5.5, 5, we are children of the light. And there are many more. You may have your favorites. So please share those with someone today. We are so blessed. So perhaps the moment you've all been waiting for, burn the ships. What does that even mean? Well, as my eight-year-old son would say, let me tell you, burn the ships is said to have come from Julius Caesar, the Roman emperor who set out to conquer England over 2,000 years ago. Upon landing at the coast, his soldiers soon realized that the Celtics had way more men. They were outnumbered. It is said that Caesar made a daring move because he knew his men were tired and he questioned their commitment. As long as those Roman ships sat along the coast, there would be thoughts of retreat. So Caesar ordered the ships to be burned. 
There would be no escape. There would be no retreat, no going back, no safety. He needed 100% commitment from his men. Burn the ships means to do something which forces you to continue with a particular action and it makes it impossible for you to return to an earlier situation. So in Caesar's case, they had to move forward with the plan to attack. Uncomfortable, outnumbered and all, and had no way to go back. Where in the Bible can we find this level of commitment to burn the ships? Again, let me tell you, while there are several examples, like Elijah calling out the Israelites on who they will serve, or Jesus telling his disciples to leave behind their boats to follow him, today we're going to focus on the story of Elisha. So if you'd like, you can turn to 1 Corinthians 19. 19, and I will read um, through verse 21. So if you would like, you can turn to 1 Kings 19, and I'll start in verse 19. So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the 12th pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said, and then I will come with you. Go back, Elijah replied. What have I done to you? So Elisha left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and became his servant. So, Elisha had 12 teams of oxen, which is a total of 24 oxen. Okay, this shows he was a wealthy farmer. By him burning the plowing equipment and killing the oxen, it's like burning the ships because it made it impossible for him to go back to farming and it made it impossible for him to go back to doing what he knew. This would have also been a huge financial burden. Okay? And the sacrifice of the oxen was more than just a feast for the people. That was a sacrifice and an offering to God. This was an all-in level of commitment to Elijah and to God. Elisha had no idea what was in store for him, but he went anyways. He followed and he obeyed. Previously in 1 Kings 19, we see Elijah fleeing to Mount Horeb in a cave. It says in verse 9, And the word of the Lord came to him, What? are you doing here, Elijah? Okay, so the Lord and Elijah go back into conversation. I'm going to read verses 10 through 18. Feel free to follow along in 1 Kings 19, verse 10. He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, 
but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back to the way, go back the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus. When you are there, anoint Hazael over Aram, and anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel, and anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel, Mahola, to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death anyone who escaped the sword of Hazael, and Elijah will put to death any who escaped the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel. All those whose knees have not bowed down to Baal and whose mouths have not yes, yet kissed him. You see, Elisha, Elijah thought he was the only one left who was true to God. He was having his moment. Have you ever felt alone? But God, God meets Elijah in that moment. God shows up. God tells Elijah to get going and to anoint Elisha to succeed him. He gives him a Christian brother, just like he gives us each other, other sons and daughters to lean on, as well as all access to him anytime we want. Where has God met you recently? Let me tell you a story about a woman, a woman who wandered away like a lost sheep. Jesus, being the good and faithful shepherd that he is, went looking for the one. He left the 99 to come find me. But I've been found. God met me right where I was at every single time. And he'll meet you too. I've burned several ships. Ships that I can't go back to, friends. The last ship that I burned happened this past May. I had been wanting to be rebaptized re ever since I went through instructor training in 2021. I was baptized as a baby. I've always been a believer, but I felt God calling me to be washed, to let go of comforts and struggles and old stories that I had been holding on to, but they were also holding me captive. So on May 12th, the opportune time came at Lost Canyon at Impact Retreat with Revelation Wellness. I had no idea it was coming. I had no idea the amount of goodness he could have for me in one place. The week was absolutely incredible. I had been praying weeks prior to this event that God would meet me in clear ways, and he totally did. So in the presence of other sons and daughters, God invited me into a safe place. And out of obedience, I listened. I still can't completely put it all into words, how sweetly he cared for me in those moments. My flesh wanted to stay in my warm clothes, out of the cold, cool night air in the mountain, to stay in the background where no one could see me. But my spirit said, come, let go, and let God. And I, as I rose out of the water, for a moment it felt like an eternity, but not in a hard way. All I could see when I came up out of the water was this powerful, mighty, 
beautiful lion. But he was protecting me. I wasn't scared. And all I could hear, all that was ringing in my ears was this ferocious roar. But again, I knew it wasn't directed at me because I had feelings of being safe and secure because I knew I was in his presence. And that lion ripped through chains that held me. And in the next moment, I was free. God called me out of a place that I had been holding on to. And by getting baptized, it was my recommitment to him that I was all in, not going back. I burned that ship. I'm going to turn to Galatians 3.26. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the word. We continue in Galatians 4, verses 4 through 7. But when the set time had come fully, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption sonship because you are his sons and daughters God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts the spirit who calls out Abba father so you are no longer a slave but God's child and since you are his child God has made you an heir so you see sons and daughters we are are his heirs. So burn the ships that are stopping you from fully committing to him. What comforts are you holding on to? What comforts are you not willing to let go of? Speak to him and let him show you. Romans 12, 1 reminds us to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. So what can we do once we have received, once we have believed, as we heard about earlier and last week with Heather? There are three things or good works that come, and these are things that God placed on my heart specifically to share with you today. In Ephesians 2.10, it says, For we are God's handy work, created in Christ to do good works. Number one, obey. This is a big one. It's God first, God only. Love God with all your heart, all your mind, body, and soul. To obey him is to listen to his commands. Okay, to worship him, to praise him, to give him thanks, to be a living sacrifice, telling others about him, seeking him through his word, and spending time with him. Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. So seek first his kingdom, friends. Number two, pray. Okay, prayer is conversation with God. And it's also a time to hear him, to hear his voice, and to get to know who he is. 
We are reminded in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 to pray without ceasing. Okay, this means do not stop. Do not stop having conversation with our Father. Friends, He hears you. He hears all of you. He hears your prayers. He knows your heart. Do not stop having conversation with Him. Number three, serve. Let's follow our brother's example. Who better to follow? Who better to learn from about loving others than Jesus? 1 Peter 4.10 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace. We all have unique gifts given to us to share. Did you know the Greek word for serve is diakoneo, which means to care for the needs of others as the Lord. It also means to minister. What a beautiful picture. Matthew twenty twenty eight, The Son of Man did not come to be served but to serve. That means we get to go first and love others. Our brother, our father, they went first. They gave so we could receive. We were chosen and we did nothing to get it. Colossians 3.17 Whatever you do, whether in deed, in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So, what ship, what plow do you need to burn? What would it look like for you to commit your life fully to our Heavenly Father? What old life is he asking you to lose so you can put on the new? Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. His ways are far greater, far better than we can even begin to imagine or understand. Now this doesn't mean it's always going to be easy. It doesn't mean that we won't struggle, that it won't be hard. For the road is narrow. But he does promise us to be with us as we go. So a quick review. First, you have to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He died to save all of us. Believe it in your heart. Because of your faith in him, we are able to do good works out of love. Because we know who we are, and whose we are. Okay, so we can do three things as sons and daughters. We can obey, we can pray, and we can serve as his, fully his, as we are. Lastly, in Mark 3.34, Jesus says, Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister. So I pray this message bless you as much as it's blessed me to have the honor of delivering it to you. If you would, please hit share or send it to somebody right now. Let's make his name known. So I'm going to quick pray for us. Heavenly Father, 
Thank you. Thank you for the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you for loving us so much. You continue to pursue us every day. I pray, Lord, that we see and hear with fresh eyes and fresh ears. Lord, if you can make it abundantly clear, places that do not align with you, that are stopping us from being fully committed to you. Lord, I pray for all your sons and daughters. Hear our prayers. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. One more thing, you guys. I just want to invite you to please go and download a packet for instructor training. Platoon 29 kicks off August 9th and early bird pricing ends July 26th. All of the information you need, contact information, and all of the details are in the packet. So prayerfully consider this call for your life and let God do the rest. Also stay tuned for next week's teaching from my beloved sister in Christ, Kelly. It's going to be delightful. So I pray the Lord richly blesses your day. Thank you for joining. Have a great day.